Good evening. I'm Ann Nyberg. And I'm Darren Kramer. As your local election headquarters, News 8 is proud to bring you the second gubernatorial debate between Ned Lamont and Bob Stefanowski. In their first debate last week, the two candidates challenged each other on uniquely different proposals on how to solve Connecticut's fiscal crisis, repair a stagnant economy, and move the state forward. The venue tonight is right here at the historic Schubert Theater in downtown New Haven. Tonight's debate is presented by the Connecticut Association of Realtors. These debates are designed to give you an understanding of the candidate's vision for Connecticut's future. With Governor Dan Malloy not seeking a third term, this is the first time since 2010 there is an open seat for the state's top office. In addition to budget matters and tax proposals, you can expect to hear more tonight about issues like health care for Connecticut residents and funding for the state's colleges and universities. These critical issues impact everybody in our state. As your local election headquarters, News 8 is proud to bring you this second debate between Ned Lamont and Bob Stefanowski. Joining us now from the Schubert Theater is tonight's moderator, Connecticut Realtors President Michael Barbaro. Good evening and welcome to the Schubert Theater in New Haven. Thank you for joining us for tonight's debate between Republican Bob Stefanowski and Democratic candidate Ned Lamont. This event is hosted by Connecticut Realtors in partnership with WTNH News Channel 8. I'm Connecticut Realtors President Michael Barbaro and I will be your moderator for this evening. I'm going to introduce our panelists first. Our panelists tonight will be asking our questions. We're going to start out with WTNH Capital Correspondent Mark Davis. Please. In the center, we have CTR TV, Christy Olds. And on the left, we have the Hartford Current Metro Desk content editor, Russell Blair. Russell, thank you for joining us. I'd like to introduce our timekeepers for this evening. It's the League of Women Voters of Southeast Connecticut. Thank you, ladies. The rules for tonight are simple. Candidates will be asked a series of randomized questions by our panelists in the order that was predetermined by the organizer by coin toss. Uh, for each question, candidates will be given 60 seconds to answer, followed by a 90-second rebuttal, followed by a 30-second response from the original candidate that was asked the question. We will ask as many questions as possible in the time allowed. And most importantly, we ask that you hold your applause during the candidates' answers and, have some, and, and show please decorum and respect for the candidates during their answers this evening. I want to introduce our candidates. We're going to start with opening statements. Let's begin with Republican candidate Bob Stefanowski. Mr. Stefanowski. Thank you, Michael. Ladies and gentlemen, it's only the second debate, but the choice in this election is becoming crystal clear. Ned Lamont will deliver Connecticut a third term of Dan Malloy. He's going to raise taxes. He's going to put up tolls. He's going to make bigger government and spend more, and he's going to introduce a statewide auto tax. In other words, he's going to continue eight years of horrible economic policy that got into us into this mess. And you realtors are on the front lines of it. As just one example, Housing prices in Fairfield County are down 24% in the last 10 years. It is time for a change. I'll cut taxes. I'll make government smaller and more efficient. I'll bring people, jobs, and opportunity back to the state of Connecticut, which will raise home prices and bring the prosperity back to our state that we once had. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bob. Now we'll hear from our Democratic candidate, Ned Lamont. Mr. Lamont? Well, there you go again, Bob. You're sort of fantasizing that you're running against uh, Dan Malloy. Well, you're running against Ned Lamont. And actually, I'm the guy that ran against Dan Malloy eight years ago. You know, where were you? Where were you in 2010 when you could have weighed in and made a difference? Where were you in 2014? You know, where was Bob? Uh, I got to tell you, I agree with you in one sense. The choice in this race is crystal clear. Bob Stefanowski's tax scheme will decimate our budget, cut over half of the revenues, resulting in greatly increasing property taxes right here in New Haven and beyond, and gutting education. And my plan is very different. I will not raise the income tax. I will cut property taxes. 
and I will invest in education to make sure we train people for the 21st century jobs we have going forward. I will put Connecticut back to work and get Connecticut working again. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lamont. Let's get started with our debate. Our first question will be asked by CTR own Christy Olds of Mr. Stefanowski. Christy? We've seen the effects of partisanship both on the federal and state level leading to a lack of progress. It clearly shows that there is a need for bipartisanship in government. With the state legislature nearly evenly split, how would your administration ensure a spirit of productive cooperation across the aisle? 60 seconds, please. Sure, Christy. Just before I address that, I, I'm not sure which, uh, which Ned to believe. Uh, the one who was on TV and radio three, four weeks ago saying he was going to raise taxes and put up tolls or what we heard tonight. Um, but I'll pass on that. Um, what this state needs is leadership. Think about the last budget process. You had the governor, the Democratic governor of the state of Connecticut, kicked out of the budget process by his own party. That would never happen in the private sector. This state is yearning for leadership. I've done it at General Electric. I've done it at UBS. I know how to build consensus. I know how to get people to do things that don't necessarily work for me. I know how to drive a budget, and I know how to deliver results. I've got Democrats, independents, Republicans, and unaffiliated voters running up to me saying, thank God somebody has common sense to fix this budget. We are scared to death of more tax and spend by Ned Lamont. Please, 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 Bob, I hope you win. Otherwise, we're leaving the state of Connecticut. Thank you. 90 seconds, Mr. Lamont. Please hold your applause. I think that more tax and blaming the past is no way to turn this state around. I will have a very different operating method than both Bob and Dan Malloy. My door is going to be open. I'm going to share credit wherever I can. I'll take the blame for the tough decisions that we've got to do. And I've done that. I've done that my whole life. You know, when GE left, Bob mentioned, um, I got folks together. I got the leaders from GE. I got leaders of the House and the Senate and um, Republicans and Democrats, labor and business. And I said, we're going to have to learn from what happened here. And that's the way I'm going to do be a governor. I'm going to make sure that my door is open. I'm going to make sure I'm working every day with Republicans and Democrats reaching across the aisle. Look, I'm a business guy. I work well with uh, business folks, and I also have the respect of labor. And I think that's the type of respect you need going forward. I'm a progressive Democrat. I look a little like a Republican. I think I can cross the aisle and get what we have to get done. You do need a governor that works well with people. That's what I will be. Thank you, Mr. Lamont. Once again, I just want to remind the audience to please hold your applause. <laughs> Bob, Thank 30 you, seconds follow-up. Leadership is about consistency. And I have said from day one, just about a year ago, I will make government smaller and more responsive. I will cut your taxes. I will bring growth back to the state of Connecticut. Again, I don't know where Mr. Lamont spent, spent stands on this because he said on radio and on video, I'm going to raise taxes. Everybody's got to share part of the burden. I'm putting up tolls. And now suddenly we, we aren't. Leadership is sticking to a philosophy. That's what drives people crazy about politicians, the pandering to the polls. I've been consistent. We're going to get taxes down in this state. And both sides of the aisle are going to rally around that. Thank you, sir. Our next question will be asked by Mark Davis, and it will be asked of Mr. Lamont. Mark? All right, thanks, Michael. UConn is the state's flagship university, as you know. And in a recent U.S. News and World Report ranking of public universities, UConn dropped from 18 to 22nd. In the Hartford Current, UConn President Susan Herbst said that a major reduction in state funding was contributing to the slide. Republican and Democratic leaders also pointing the fingers at each other about the problem. If our state is so concerned about the brain drain and keeping state college graduates in Connecticut, then what is the best solution to avoid more funding cuts at UConn? Well, first of all, what you don't do is eliminate over half of our revenues in short order. Talk about pandering to the polls. Absolutely no plan how you pay for that at all. No plan at all. Your governor's going to have to come up with a budget within four months. 
You can't start with a blank piece of paper. This is something you've got to do right now. I have said repeatedly, I'm going to be committed to education, investing in education. That means VOTEC. That means K through 12. We have tens of thousands of really good paying jobs in this state right now. We can't fill because we're not training the people for those jobs. And that gets us to UConn. UConn is our flagship university. Look, I am going to streamline how they do business there. We're going to see, make sure there has absolutely no waste. But a strong flagship university in terms of all the job opportunities that come out of there, all the spinoffs of new opportunities, we've got to do that at UConn. We've got to do that with our state universities. We've got to do that right here in New Haven, where we have one of the greatest universities in the world. Let's make sure they're working on behalf of the greater good here in Connecticut as well. Thank you, sir. Mr. Stepanowski, 90 seconds. Yeah, we need to take a holistic approach to education. Um, unlike Mr. Lamont, I went to the public schools. Um, I was actually born a half a mile here at, at St. Rayfield's. Uh, I went to the public schools in North Haven. I got a terrific education. I went to Fairfield University in Connecticut. I was a senior person at General Electric. I was the chief financial officer of UBS Investment Bank. It's a $500 billion business over 35 countries. And you know what provided that for me? My 88-year-old father sitting in the front row, a lot of hard work and a value on education. We need to make college more affordable. Everybody needs to be part of the solution. When I travel around this state and talk to mid-sized companies, they are dying for basic engineering skills, machine tools, programming. Those are the skill sets they need. Not every student should be going to college. The return on investment of a $200,000 investment makes sense for some kids, but it doesn't make sense for others. So it's not a question about UConn. It's about how do we get this state organized around education. Think about the financial mess we're in, what Dan Malloy has created and what Ned Lamont wants to continue. And we've got a situation where mid-sized businesses have more demand for workers than supply. How can that happen? We need to bring a common sense approach back to education, a holistic approach, and prepare our kids for the future. Thank you, sir. Mr. Lamont, 30 second follow up. Well, gutting education is absolutely no way to do that. I'm going to work very closely with the business community and our colleges and community colleges. Uh, that's what we did uh, over the last couple of years. We met with all the leading CEOs. We asked them, what are the type of jobs you need for the 21st century to make sure we train people for those jobs? Those are Connecticut jobs for Connecticut families. That's what you need a governor who's able to do. Get the business community involved with UConn, involved with our university systems, involved with our VOTEC, and make sure we have the best trained workforce in the world. Thank you, sir. Our next question will be asked by Russell Blair, the Hartford Current. And he'll ask the question of Mr. Stefanowski. Russell? A report this year showed Connecticut was one of the toughest places in the country to find an affordable apartment. The cost of housing affects not just young millennials getting started, but also empty nesters and retirees who want to remain in Connecticut. Should state government take any steps to encourage or push cities and towns to build more affordable housing? I think we should leave it up to the towns, Russell. And uh, there are some towns that do a very good job at that. Um, and there are others that should probably focus it on a little bit more. But whether we're talking about affordable housing or education, what, what Ned doesn't understand is the best way to provide that for everyone is a better economy. And taxing and spending the people of Connecticut relentlessly, like we've done over the last eight years and he wants to continue, is not the way to provide the economic growth to help people. It shouldn't be about affordable housing. It should be about getting people's jobs. It should be about rising real estate values. It should be about lower taxes. It should be about better transportation, better education. And the fundamentally best way to do that is a growing economy. And that's what my plan is going to do. It's going to get rid of the state income tax over eight years. It's going to reduce the corporate tax and bring jobs and people back to the state. And it's going to get this economy moving so everybody participates. Thank you, sir. Mr. Lamont. I think Bob's tax plan would drive our economy into a dead stop. Uh, you were a member of the uh, Fiscal Commission that made an emphasis upon fiscal stability as a precursor to economic development and growth. Eliminating $10 billion in revenues over a short period of time guaranteed no matter what 
would just be dysfunctional in terms of having a budget that's predictable and reliable, which is what the business community needs. The question was about affordable housing. Let me get to that. I mean, I talk to the business leaders of this state all the time, and they do tell me, look, I need a place where young people can afford to be. That's one of the reasons I've called for a $300 property tax cut in the first year and $1,200 in the second budget. Make it a little easier for that person to buy that first home. I've heard from um, all the business leaders who said you've got to make a priority out of transportation. In fact, the business leaders have signed on to some type of tolling. I've been very specific. Tolling just for the big tractor trailer trucks coming in and out of the state. But what that means is we end the gridlock, move the tractor trailers off peak a little bit, and make it a lot easier for us to get around this state. I've got to tell you that our geographic location was always our greatest advantage, the gateway to New England, the great gateway to the middle Atlantic states. Now we're in a dead halt. Uh, the Republicans and Bob Stefanowski said, maybe we can borrow our way and get more transportation. I would invest in transportation, invest in our cities with affordable housing, transit-oriented development there, get people out of their cars, closer to work. Thank you, sir. Mr. Stefanowski, 30 seconds. There's another pivot. He's on Chaz and AJ, and he says he's going to put up tolls. Then he realizes how unpopular it is. So now the plan is to only tax out-of-state heavy trucks. Does anybody in the audience honestly believe that if we go through the legislative process and the money to raise to put up tolls and all that's involved, that a year from now, every time you commute to work, you're not going to be hit with a toll? Of course he's going to put tolls back on the road. And we cannot afford it in this state anymore. Enough tax is enough. Thank you, sir. Our next question. I just want to remind the audience again, please hold your applause. You can't throw everybody out. <laughs> Our next question will be asked by Christy Olds of Mr. Lamont. Thanks, Michael. Mr. Lamont, government leadership is not just about working with other politicians and elected officials. Industry associations such as the Connecticut Association of Realtors, as well as universities and nonprofits, are willing to be part of the conversation and the solution. How would your administration work with these groups and capitalize on their exper expertise in order to improve the state of our state? I'm going to do anything I can to get the business community more involved in this state. That's so, so important. Look, I would be the first governor in 80 years who started a business and created jobs. And I know what it takes to um, work with small business, work with the business association, work with the realtors. Uh, look, Andy's parents were in the real estate trade. I know the real estate trade as well. You people know more than anybody else how important the quality of life is here, how important low property taxes, a great school system are to vibrant communities. And I have to fight every day for our vibrant communities and fight every day for our cities. So yes, if that means working with the local chambers of commerce, if that works wor working with the realtors, that work means working with the um, academic community, those are all the partners you need a governor to bring together. That is what leadership is all about. I will make sure we're rowing in the same direction, doing everything we can to have strong, vibrant communities. Thank you, sir. Mr. Stefanowski, 90 seconds, sir. Please. In order to run an entity the size of the state of Connecticut, which is a $40 billion biannual budget, you need to have run something like that before. I was CFO of UBS Investment Bank. We had a $500 billion business. I was a chief officer at the General Electric Company. Mr. Lamont ran a small cable company where he laid off 60% of his workers and paid himself a half a million dollar bonus. That's not the type of leadership we need for the state of Connecticut, ladies and gentlemen. What this governor does is he plays defense. He waits for a company to threaten to leave and then he bribes them to stay. That's why my tax policy is so important. We need to get the corporate tax rate down. If you're a business and you're looking to relocate today, are you going to go to Connecticut or are you going to go to Massachusetts where the tax rate is smaller and the regulation is less? But it's not too late. With sound fiscal policy, we can reduce that corporate tax rate. We can reduce regulation. We can reduce the size of government. We can increase our skilled labor force. And we can attract companies to want to be here rather than bribing them. That's what these people don't get. It's not about convincing people not to leave. By the time they're ready to leave, it's too late. Let's cut taxes. Let's bring back jobs. Let's bring people back to our state. Let's give people money for education. And that'll also result 
in a rebound of the real estate market, not the eight years of decimation caused by Dan Malloy and the policy that Ned is going to continue. It's simple as that. It really is. Thank you, sir. Mr. Lamont. I'm so proud of the small business that we started. We grew assets. We grew and appreciated every day. We worked closely with our folks. And I, you should not be talking down about small business. That's the future of the state. Bob went to a lot of big businesses. He was a corporate suit of these big businesses. They were all much worse off after he left. He says he's a turnaround expert. And every time you turn around, they're firing more people and uh, leaving empty buildings in uh, the state of Connecticut. Look at GE. Look at UBS. You want somebody who believes in the state, believes in our future. That's what small business does. Thank you. Next question for, me, for Mr. Stefanowski, Mark Davis. This uh, question is about the Connecticut State College and University System. It comes from a News 8 viewer named James. He says, year after year, the Appropriations Committee struggles to pass a budget that adequately funds our state's system for higher education. What will you do specifically to help stop the reduction in state spending towards higher education in the CSCU system that is causing tuition to increase and resources and programs at these schools to decrease? Well, I think it's around accountability, Mark, and, and it's holding everybody in this state accountable for the money that they get. We have a terrific state education system in Connecticut. It's one of the assets of this state, and we need to do everything we can to continue to invest in it. But to your point, college needs to be affordable for kids that want to go there. So all of these universities are going to have to tighten their belt. Maybe there's some things we can do around shared services. Maybe there's some things we can do around paper performance with teachers. But we have to keep the sound education system that we have. It's one of the best assets in the state of Connecticut. And I will go back to, and I'm going to keep coming back to it, the best way to fund colleges, universities, and all the things that Ned Lamont wants to do is a vibrant economy. And the best way to get a vibrant economy is to do the exact opposite of what Dan Malloy has done and reduce taxes, increase jobs, and that will drive longer tax revenues that we can invest in all types of education throughout this state. Thank you, sir. Mr. Lamont. The best way to get a vibrant economy is an honestly balanced budget you get done on time, on budget, so you have predictability and people know exactly what it's going to be going forward. I'm somebody who's not going to raise the income tax, I'll reduce the property tax and give people certainty that they have a budget that's in balance going forward. Look, I teach at a Central Connecticut State University. I know what it means there. Uh, you're not going to be able to fund and hold down the price of education if you got over uh, $10 billion from our budget in a short period of time. But there's a lot we can do to make our uh, schools more efficient and more effective. What I did at CCSU is I brought the business community in. We had travelers there. We had engineering companies. They came and taught. They help with the curriculum, so we're training people for those jobs. They introduce young people to the different type of occupations and um, opportunities they had. And that's part of what college education is all about. Uh, it's not for everybody, but it's a good start. I'm going to do that with the community colleges as well, to make sure that we train people for the Connecticut jobs. Tens of thousands of jobs right now we can't fill. If you just gut the community college system, pull that back, roll it out, we're not going to have the trained people we need to get this state moving again. That transportation and honestly balanced budget, that's how we get this state moving again. And that's what I'll do for you every day as your governor. Thank you, sir. I don't know about you guys, but I can't follow the bouncing ball. <laughs> You know, last week it was a $100 property tax credit. Now it's a $300 property tax credit. You know, maybe it's 150 bucks a month now. Three weeks ago, he was raising income taxes. What a great interviewer Raving Ryan is. Watch that show when he interviews Ned Lamont. He says we're going to increase taxes, and everyone is going to share part of the blame. Now he's a tax cutter. This is exactly why people cannot trust politicians. I've been consistent on this from the start. We're going to lower taxes. Ned Lamont is not. Time is up. Thank you. Our next question is Russell Blair. Mr. Lamont. Connecticut continues to have one of the largest achievement gaps in the nation. Two years ago, a Superior Court judge declared the state was defaulting on its constitutional duty to fairly educate its poorest children and ordered legislators to come up with a new funding formula for public schools. What steps would you take to narrow the achievement gap and what, if any, changes would you make to the way, the way Connecticut funds its public schools? 
We have a new uh, funding formula that comes into effect uh, next year that will be based on need. We have uh, commissioner districts and other schools who are going to put particular focus on those schools that are most in need. I was a, a volunteer at Harding High School in Bridgeport. I saw the opportunity in each and every one of those kids' eyes of what it meant to them to get a great education going forward. It doesn't have to cost money, though. There are other things we can do. One simple example. Most of our kids in our schools in Connecticut today are children of color. 8% of the teachers are teachers of color. Not many of them are guys. These kids are looking for a role model to help them aspire to what they want to do. So one of the things I would do as your governor, it's uh, not expensive, but to forgive the student loan for that teacher that goes into a Harding High or some of those most distressed districts. Those are the ways that you'll be able to get the best and the brightest going to those schools, giving those kids the best opportunity, closing that achievement gap, and giving our next generation of workers the best opportunity. Sir. Mr. Stefanowski, once again, please be respectful. I don't know about you guys, but I see uh, higher taxes coming a mile away. I really do. <laughs> I'm a product of the public schools. The public schools were terrific to me. We need to support our public schools, uh, but there needs to be accountability. Um, we spend um, more on pupils today um, than most states in the country, actually two times, and our test results are equal. Um, we need to have accountability. We need to absolutely fund our schools. We may need to increase funding, but there also needs to be accountability. And I'll tell you one thing I'm not going to do which Governor Malloy does consistently, is he sets a budget for the, the poor school districts at the beginning of the year, then when he runs into a budget crisis in the general fund in Hartford, he cuts it mid-year. How do you run a school when you don't know what your funding is going to be? We also need to look at alternatives, magnet schools, charter schools. There are some terrific examples out there, but again, it's going to be a holistic approach, and it's going to be based on a variety of models, but it's going to be funded, it's going to take care of our kids, and the best way to provide more funding for education is a good economy. I'm going to deliver it. He's not. You see? Thanks so much. Well, I don't know what a holistic approach is, but I know that when you cut $10 billion out of a budget and also say, don't worry, you're going to have education funding as needed, we're going to make the investments we need, something doesn't add up. The math doesn't add up. I heard that from each of the Republican candidates for governor during the primary as well. The math doesn't add up, and it's a false premise. If you want to say you're on your own, we're going to cut it back, we're going to leave it to cities, leave it to the towns, and get the state out of the game, you can say that. But otherwise, it's a false promise. I will tell you the truth. Thank you, sir. Next question will be asked by Christy Olds and Mr. Stefanowski. Christy. With the current status of the real estate market, CTR opposes any further burden on home buyers and sellers. Those burdens include a buyer's conveyance tax, which is a tax at the time of real estate transfer, an expanded seller's conveyance tax, and a statewide property tax. All three of those were proposed at some point over the past two legislative sessions and successfully defeated in part by CTR. Where do you stand on each of those proposed tax increases? The, um, the conveyance tax raises a $40 billion biannual budget. The conveyance tax raises about $200 million a year. Get rid of it. <laughs> we will see more of an appreciation on home values if we get rid of that tax. It will more than offset the amount of the tax that we collect. That's what Mr. Lamont doesn't understand. Despite the two largest tax increases in the history of Connecticut by Dan Malloy, which he'll continue to do, tax revenues are down. Cutting taxes actually increases revenue in the long term. The conveyance tax, if we cut that, housing prices will start to go up. We changed the parameters around the estate tax last year. You know what happened? Revenues on the estate tax went up by close to $50 million. I don't know whether Mr. Lamont missed his uh, economic course at Harvard, but you cut the tax rate, people stay. Your tax base increases. We're seeing the exact opposite in the state of Connecticut. People are leaving, 80 people are leaving every day to avoid a horrible tax regime. And what does he want to do? He wants to continue it. Thank you, sir. Mr. Lamont. I heard the exact same rhetoric in Kansas about five years ago. 
And Arthur Laffer, who advised Bob, advised Sam Brown back, they said, we're going to eliminate the income tax in Kansas. And a thousand flowers will bloom, and you'll watch economic growth that will more than pay for itself. Five years later, let me tell you, they sent the governor out on a rail, they decimated education, job creation slowed to a halt, and a bipartisan group in the legislature put in place uh, a fiscal system that was in balance going forward. And Bob loves Donald Trump and the Donald Trump tax cuts. There's one thing we can't do. I mean, he had a tax cut. He had a tax cut that's going to result in eight, nine hundred billion dollar budget deficits as far as the eye can see. The Republicans used to be the party of fiscal conservatism. I don't know what happened to that. Eliminate taxes, watch what happens. You can't do that in Connecticut. We have to have an honestly balanced budget. Let me tell you about costs and uh, what's going to happen if you eliminate um, ten billion dollars out of our um, out of our revenue stream. That will be pushed on to the towns. That will mean a great increase in property taxes. You know, many of our towns and cities, uh, you know, depend upon the education formula right now. If you want to have young people coming back to the state, growing this economy, you have to have strong and vibrant cities. And Bob's plan would decimate education, jack up the property tax, and absolutely take us in the wrong direction. Other things of cost in the state, power, health care, things I hope we get to. Sir. Thank you. Mr. Stefanowski? <laughs> Could you pick a more different state from Connecticut than Kansas? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Oz isn't even on the stage tonight. We're talking about the Wizard of Oz. But... <laughs> Here's the bottom line. Before 1991, Connecticut did not have a state income tax. We were the fastest growing economy in the entire nation. How can people tell me it's impossible to do something we've already done before? Of course it makes sense to get rid of that state income tax. It's being eaten up by, uh, by the applause. By jokes, so. I'm sorry. <laughs> it was a good joke, but... but uh, <laughs> I give it a B minus. It took a little over your time. Yeah. Mark Davis, next question for Mr. Lamont. Uh, this question comes from a uh, News 8 viewer, Sarah, in Milford concerns family leave. She says, I work as a child care worker and live paycheck to paycheck. I am worried about taking time off from work to help my elderly mother. My husband and I have already taken significant leave from work due to health issues. My family still feels the financial and emotional stress from that period. Connecticut is now surrounded by states that have passed paid family and medical leave. If elected, what will you do to make sure comprehensive paid family and medical leave legislation passes next session. I will work closely with CBIA. I will work closely with the business community, and we will get this passed. Let me tell you as a small businessman why this is important. It's not just the right thing to do for that single mom who you can't force her to choose between taking care of a sick child and being able to provide for their family and work. It also is about keeping your, your workplace together, keeping the workforce together. You can't afford to lose these people, not in a period like this. And in the 21st century, almost half of our folks in uh, some of our cities like Hartford are single parents. You've got to have a workplace that accommodates that. I will do that respectfully. I will work that in close consultation with the business community. We'll be able to work with small business because that's the world I come out of. But that is something we've got to do. Look, you want Connecticut to be at the forefront here. You want those young families to know this is a place where they can be and grow a family and expand and, and, and do that. And that's what I mean to do as your governor. Thank you, sir. Mr. Stefanowski. You know, we need to do something uh, to help everybody that needs it. Um, but this, that Ned is going to absolutely crush mid-sized business in this state. He wants to increase the minimum wage by 50 percent. Um, he wants to give more and more money out of uh, small and mid-sized business in the state. Should we provide an opportunity for people to voluntarily put money away for when they need it for savings? Absolutely. Should we think about a company match? Absolutely. But again, the best way to take care of families, whether they're in need or not, is to give them more take-home pay every week. Ned Lamont's going to do the opposite. You're going to get in your car, you're going to drive to work, you're going to go through three toll stops. <laughs> you know, your, your tax rate is going to go up. Just ask Raving Ryan. The taxes are going up. Um, and you're going to have less money. 
Let's give more people more money in their pocket so that they can save for events like this. If an employer wants to match it, that would be terrific. But small and mid-sized government in this state has been regulated, and they're all leaving. And that's increasing unemployment. It's driving down home prices, and it's driving down tax revenues. We need to support small business. We need to support people that need it. But we need to take a free market approach, not yet another government-mandated big cost-and-spend approach to problems. It just doesn't work. Sir, Mr. Lamont. Bob knows nothing about small business. He knows nothing about the world we live in. Working closely with your folks, he's worked at big businesses and made them smaller over the course of that time. Look, you don't even support a minimum wage. You said, you know, let them manage on their own. Zero minimum wage. I worked with the Fiscal Commission where you were, and I see that over a period of time they said we can move up our minimum wage uh, to $15 over a period of time. That, wages, that raises wages for everybody. That helps build out our middle class going forward. And that's what we've got to be willing to do. You've got to be able to make those changes that makes it easier to work in Connecticut. Next question. Russell Blair of Mr. Stefanowski. The cost of health care, particularly the cost of prescription drugs, has skyrocketed, skyrocketed across the country and in Connecticut. An AARP report last year found the average price of drugs older adults take every day to control chronic conditions like diabetes and high blood pressure more than tripled from 2006 to 2015. What steps, if any, should state government take to try to bring down these costs for consumers? Yeah, health care costs are out of control. Um, and it's not the government taking control of it like I'm sure Ned uh, would like to have happen. The government controls the DMV. How's that working out for us? <laughs> we need to provide more competition. We need to give our people access to affordable health care. We need to allow the citizens of Connecticut to look cross-border and get cheaper prices. The answer is not a mandated another program by big government that we know is going to fail. The answer is the free market. It's holding pharmaceutical companies discipline. It's holding doctors discipline. And it's instituting the parameters and budgeting that you have in any corporation in the private sector. Government is not good at running things. How many examples do you need to see? So we can get the price of prescription jobs down. We can do things around cost synergies and bundle purchases, but it is not mandating like Mr. Lamont is about to tell you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Lamont. Well, first of all, this is the 10th anniversary of the collapse of Lehman Brothers. And you saw what that did to this uh, country. And GE and UBS and a lot of other financial institutions had to have enormous bailouts. So I'm somebody that comes out of the private sector. I also know that the private sector does not solve all of our problems. Anybody who thinks that the free market is the way to hold down drug prices, look out there right now. Look what's going on in our drug prices. Look what that's doing to uh, families across this state. And yet, there's a lot more we can do. Coming out of the business world, I'll tell you, Connecticut, about 25% of our expenditures are related to uh, health care. That's a, the biggest cost that we can uh, drive. Let's use our purchasing power. Let's go in there and negotiate. Let's bring down the high cost of pharma. That will save our taxpayers money. That will save state employees. And then we can allow even our small towns and others to buy in through that program. Look, um, Bob Stefanowski and, and Donald Trump, you know, people with pre-existing conditions, they're, they're on their own. They're going to have to figure out what they got to do. And that's absolutely the wrong way to go as a government, and that's not Connecticut values. Those are Trump values, but not Connecticut values. What I would do <laughs> is I'd work aggressively to get the reinsurance program to bring down the cost of insuring those, uh, those folks who are most vulnerable, but you do not leave them out by themselves alone. The free market will not solve this by itself. I understand what the free market can do, but I want a smart governor who does everything he can to hold down our health care costs. Thank you, sir. Mr. Stefanowski, 30 seconds. Uh, Ned, I'll, I'll let you say a lot, but I'm not going to let you intentionally distort facts, and you know you're doing it. Okay? Please allow Mr. Stefanowski his time. Number one, I have made a commitment to protect existing condition insurance for everyone. Number two, I will appoint an insurance commissioner that does it. Number three, you may not know this, because I'm not sure what you know, but... Please, please. 
pre-existing condition has been codified in Connecticut state law. So we can talk about Washington all night. We can talk about anything other than the economy of the state of Connecticut. Mr. But Speaker, it's in law. It would require the legislature to change wrap, it. Please, I'll continue to support it. We're going to try and get back on track now. Our next question, uh, question is from Christy Olds of Mr. Lamont. Almost 25% of Connecticut's municipalities are seeing a deterioration in their tax base because of crumbling foundations. Those are due to a mineral in the concrete that causes the foundations to crumble under the house. You have both visited homes impacted by this. It is a local issue that needs multiple levels of assistance to address the problem. What do you feel is the state's role in trying to assist the municipalities and the individual homeowners? Show leadership here. I think Dan Malloy was derelict in this front. These are folks representing thousands, more than that, homes. Their entire um, nest egg is often built into the value of that home, not to mention the memories and hope, all around northwest uh, Connecticut. And uh, no, the state of Connecticut cannot solve this by itself. The state of Connecticut can't solve it. We take the lead on doing it. We work with the folks who have stakes in this game when it comes to crumbling foundations. These are folks who had foundations built out of a uh, you know, certain quarries, and now over a period of time, they are beginning to collapse, and they don't know what to do. Uh, that means the banks. That means the insurance companies. That means FEMA. We work together with those folks and come up with a solution that makes a good deal of sense. Bob went out there, and he said, uh, you know, these guys are sort of on their own. We'll, uh, we'll see if we can uh, maybe help. It's the same mentality that says, you don't need a minimum wage. You're on your own. Same mentality about... Um, pre-existing conditions. The same mentality we have coming out of Washington, D.C., those are not Connecticut values. We're going to take care of those people, and we're going to find a reasonable way to do it with the private sector. Thank you. Mr. Stefanowski. You know, we are going to take care of those people, but we're not going to do it by putting a Band-Aid on it like this governor has done and, and Ned Lamont will continue to do. Um, it's great that we added $12 to everybody's insurance premium across the state. <laughs> That's not going to raise nearly enough. This is potentially a billion-dollar problem for these poor homeowners. First of all, we need to test what level of purite is acceptable. That's the first issue. Second, for those that are willing, we need to do an analysis of these homes and see how big the problem is. We need to take a business approach to this. The political approach is, let's slap $12 on. We don't know if it's enough. We don't know if it's too much. Let's just throw it on and make the problem go away. When I'm governor, I'm going to hit issues head on. We need to size this up. We need to see how big it is. And it's going to be a collection of people that need to step to the table. The insurance companies. How are you not insured for this? It's what you buy homeowners insurance for. The mortgage companies. They stand to lose millions of dollars. They need to be part of the solution. The state government probably needs to be part of the solution. And FEMA probably needs to be start to the solution. But it doesn't help when Ben Carson comes out to talk about it and he meets with a bunch of hostile Democratic legislators that tell him to go home. <laughs> We're going to need a lot of help to solve this, ladies and gentlemen. These people are under severe duress, but we need to size it, we need a comprehensive approach, and we need to start at it now. Thank you, sir. 30 seconds, Mr. Lamont. Well, that's great. We can look at the scale of the problem. But what I said is, who are the stakeholders and who's at risk? Those are the banks. They do not want to sit on a foreclosed home. Those are the insurance companies. They had insured many of these people. They have some potential liability there as well. And that includes Washington, D.C. As your governor, I will take the lead. I will get those stakeholders, and I will give those poor people in northwest Connecticut a sense of direction that we're on the way to solving this. Yes, sir. Our next question is by Mark Davis. Of Mr. Stefanowski. Mark. Are you concerned about repeal of the Affordable Care Act? Both of you say, it's interesting, this is almost a follow up and it wasn't planned that way. Both of you say you oppose any effort to remove coverage for pre existing conditions. What about contraceptive coverage? Can the state ensure this coverage if it is repealed at the national level? Again, we talk, uh, keep talking about the national uh, level, Mark. We've got a legislature here in Connecticut that opines on these things. Um, we need to reduce the price of drugs, and it is not giving control to the federal government yet again to do an inefficient job at too much cost without any consideration of the hardworking taxpayers that are paying for it. And I'll go back to the common theme, the best way to pay for all of this stuff and give people better, better health care is a competitive tax environment. It's a vibrant economy. 
Ned is going to continue the horrible economic policies of Dan Malloy. That's going to continue to drive people out of this state. It's going to result in less money in people's pockets, less affordable health care. We need to do the opposite. We need to make Connecticut what it used to be, a vibrant economy with rising house prices, with competitiveness, small government, and prosperity. That's what I'm going to do when I'm your next governor. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Mr. Lamont. In case you don't remember the question, it involved uh, the Affordable Care Act. And um, you're right, the Affordable Care Act is key to reducing the number of people in this state uninsured by over half. The Affordable Care Act is key to protecting people with pre-existing conditions. The Affordable Care Act is key to making sure that maternity care is uh, taken care of, making sure that contraception is included as part of the base package. I didn't hear what Bob Stefanowski was going to do on any of that. I just heard a diatribe about uh, the private sector and how government screws everything up. Uh, but I can tell you that what happens in Washington impacts Connecticut every day. And the Affordable Care Act is just one example of how you want a governor who's going to be a firewall to protect our basic liberties and protect our rights. If you decimate over $10 billion from our budget, you're going to watch the price of health care go up. You're going to have more and more people who don't have preventive care. You're going to have more and more young children, you know, 20% of whom, 25% of whom now get their um, health care through Medicaid off. You're going to congest our emergency rooms. You're going to congest our hospitals and drive up the cost dramatically. You want a governor who's going to stand up every day. When it comes to the environment and clean air and clean water, you want to make sure you have a government that's not wishy-washy, a governor, when it comes to standing up for our uh, environmental standards, when it comes to standing up for a woman's right to choose. These are all threats coming out of Washington, D.C. I think you know where Ned Lamont's going to stand. I hope we will hear where Bob stands. Bob. Please hold the clock so the applause stop. Please continue. He loves to talk about Washington, doesn't he? <laughs> you know, I wish you had won your Senate run. It would have been perfect. Um, but we have a fiscal crisis in Connecticut. People are dying by the day because of this tax regime. People are moving out by the day. Ned wants to hold a conference every day, a press conference, with some, some amazing move to try to tie Connecticut to Washington. The pre-existing condition is the perfect example. It's already codified in Connecticut state law. I've already come out and said I support uh, coverage for pre-existing conditions. Let's get back on target, Ned, which is you're going to raise taxes, I'm going to lower them. Explain to these people and the people on TV why raising taxes yet again is a good thing. Thank you, sir. I have 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Bob Stefanowski, explain in just the vaguest detail how you plan to cut $10 billion from this budget. You keep mumbling about zero-based budgeting. Right now, there's zero on that blank piece of paper. You are going to crush the middle class with taxes. You're going to jack up their property tax. You're going to hit ed education. And if you see, have another way of doing it, give us an idea. You're going to have to come up with a budget in uh, four months. And right now, after 12 months of campaigning, we've had nothing but platitudes. <laughs> Thirty seconds, please. Anybody in this audience honestly think I can't five percent find five percent of waste, fraud, and abuse in this government? <laughs> Anybody here? Yeah. On a forty billion dollar biannual budget, that's a billion dollars. I get twenty million by not revamping the uh, DMV systems that Ned Lamont wants to do, and we just did it two years ago. There's twenty right there. Dan Malloy just bought a property for $5.5 million that's worth $500,000 because it was a donor to the Democratic Party. I wish I had three hours to answer this question. There's a ton of waste, Thank fraud, you, and sir. abuse. We time can sir. use that to fund a tax cut and we get this time. economy moving. Thank you, sir. We have time for one more question. If we move right along. Next question, and I believe it will be our final question. Mark Davis, asked of Mr. Lamont. Oh, it is uh, Mark Davis. I think you're out of order, but that's okay. <laughs> I think it's I Russell's, apologize, it's Russell? Russell's question. Russell? Uh, I, I have got plenty of questions. <laughs> <don't worry. laughs> I know from the last debate you do, Mark. Uh, uh, I do. Is it I ever apologize. appropriate for state government to grant or loan corporations money to stay in Connecticut and grow their workforce here? If a major employer was threatening to leave to another state that offered a financial aid package, would you offer a similar financial aid package? Is that, is that to me or Ned? 
That question is for Mr. Lamont. We lead with a bribe, and it's the wrong way to go. The first five program was a disaster with the state of Connecticut and the governor picking and choosing. Look, I worked hard with Infosys, a leading IT company, to get them to come up to Hartford. And I was struck by what our competition said, Russell. What Rhode Island said was, look, we'll match anything that Connecticut does. Now let me tell you why you ought to be in Rhode Island. And that's what you need. That's the mentality. To you need a champion for the state who believes in the state, and that's how we get companies like Infosys here. The other reason we got Infosys to come up there, 1,000 new jobs. They had the job training fair just a week ago. 1,000 new jobs a year. Connecticut jobs for Connecticut people. And we did that not with the politicians. We did that by lining up the business leaders. They were all there at the office, one by one, saying, if you come to Connecticut, if you're a champion for Connecticut, we'll be a champion for you. And that's how you do it one step at a time going forward. Not bribes, not incentives, not giveaways, not herky-jerky tax policy, consistency and reliability. Sir? Mr. Stefanowski. <clears throat> I won't even get into the fact that Infosys uh, outsources jobs to India, but, um, you know, I don't know what the word champion means. Um, I like to use the word leadership. This state is dying for leadership. We haven't had it for eight years, and I'm going to bring it. We don't need a champion. We need fundamentally sound tax policy. We need a reduced corporate rate to provide businesses the desire to be here. We need a skilled workforce. We need better transportation. We should not be driving, Russell, to your point, bribing people to stay. We should be creating a tax policy that gets companies to want to be here. After I won, Charlie Baker out of Massachusetts, who's a perfect example, called me to congratulate him. I said, Charlie, you know I'm going to get GE back to Connecticut. <laughs> He said, how are you going to do that? I said, because I'm going to lower the corporate tax rate. He said, Bob, if you do that, I'm going to lower the tax rate even more. <laughs> That's the type of cycle we want to get into. That increases jobs, it increases revenue. Right now, ladies and gentlemen, we're in a death spiral. And Ned Lamont's going to continue it. We have higher taxes, we have less jobs, we have less people here, we have less tax revenues, we have less people given to museums. Enough is enough. Whether it's health care, whether it's education, whether it's jobs, the answer is the same. It's to reverse eight years of horrible economic policies by Governor Malloy. I'm going to do it. Ned Lamont is not. So Lamont, 30 seconds. Bob Stefanowski is going to have an enormous tax cut that primarily benefits the wealthiest, and that's going to be paid for by an enormous middle-class increase in the property tax. It's the exact wrong way to go. You want to invest in our cities. You want to be investing, make sure they grow and prosper. And let me say, one way to grow our cities is to attract businesses to our cities and do everything we can. And the arrogance of saying Infosys is a company that does nothing but outsource jobs to India is just wrong. It's false. It's uh, disrespectful of a major new um, neighbor in our state that is training a thousand Connecticut people for Connecticut jobs. We've run out of time for additional questions. We have a very brief period of time before we move on to our closing statements. So I'd like to uh, just go to a quick lightning round, perhaps one word answers. Um, I'll start with Mr. Stefanowski. <laughs> in your Thank opinion, you so sir. Much, <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> what is the single most important issue of this election? Taxes. <laughs> Mr. Lamont. Jobs. Back to Mr. Stefanowski. What is the most common concern you hear from ordinary citizens every day when you're on the campaign trail? That if this economic policy continues, they're out of here. They tell me, Bob, if you don't win, we're out of the state. If Ned Lamont wins, I'm out of the state. What was not one word? Mr. Sorry. Mr. Lamont, Sorry, same thing. Change Hartford. Two words. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Last question for both of you. I hope we can do this at the one number. On a scale of 1 to 10, how critical is the issue of the opioid crisis in Connecticut, 10 being the worst? 10 okay. plus. Thank you, gentlemen. I want to thank them. I want to thank our panelists and our questioners. We're going to move on to closing statements at this point, and we will start off with uh, Mr. Stefanowski. So thank you all for having me. I think you see the, the contrast tonight. It's, it's very hard to miss. Um, I was born right down the street at St. Rayfield's. Uh, my dad worked at the Southern Rail and Telephone Company for 40 years. Um, he bought a house 45 years ago for $25,000 that he still lives in today. He's 88 years old. I'm proud of my dad. I'm proud of what he did. 
and I'm proud of the fact that I was able to build a similar family and career here in Connecticut. Dan Malloy and the economic policy that Ned Lamont are promulgating has ruined it. Enough is enough. The people of Connecticut are tired. Decades of big government, out of control spending, and tax increases have decimated this state. And part of it's selfish, ladies and gentlemen. I don't want to have to get on a plane a few years from now to go and see my grandkids in Florida because they can't afford to leave here. The time for big government is over. The time for tax cuts is here. The time for regulation is here. The less regulation, the time for bringing jobs back is here. I'm going to deliver it. I'm Ned so, Lamont so. is going to do the reverse. Exactly. Thank, Thank you, you for listening to me tonight. Please. I'm going to ask you to please hold your applause. Mr. Lamont, you have a minute, sir. My apologies. I have never heard such arrogance, my way or the highway. I'm right and you're wrong. You need a governor that can work with people. You need a governor that can reach out across the aisle. You need a governor that can work with Republicans and Democrats. You, labor in business. You need somebody who has respect of labor to get to the table and make the real tough changes we got to make in our pension plan going forward. If it's I'm right and you're wrong, we're going to have the same problems for the next four years that we've had for the last eight and longer than that. And, and Bob knocked the fact that I, um, I took on a senior member of my own party 12 years ago. I took him on because I thought the war in Iraq was the wrong thing to do. And let me tell you, it didn't make the party bosses all that happy. I stood up and I did it because I thought it was right. Every day is your governor. Let the political consequences be damned. I'm going to stand up and do what I think is right. Get this state turned around. Treat people with respect. Get an honestly balanced budget. You, get this state growing again. Thank you, Mr. Lamont. I want to thank both of our candidates for participating this evening. I want to thank both of our candidates for participating this evening and thank you all for coming and thank you for kind of behaving. <laughs> Gentlemen. <laughs>